All right, music fans, right off the bat, I want to just, um, I just want to say I'm sorry for this video that I'm about to do because it's not going to be the typical video. Um, so we had the Toby Keith thing that happened earlier. And I reported on that. And the timing of all of what went down with Toby Keith obviously is suspicious, okay? And no, no one's going to look into that. No one's going to suspect that. I made my point in the video, but now we got another one today. And this one to me seems just as bad, if not worse. Now, I'm sure most of my audience knows who Steve Morse is. Um, great guitarist on his own, was in Kansas, Dixie Dregs. Um, and most recently for the last 30 years, uh, he was lead guitarist for Deep Purple. Um, this came out this morning. Ex Deep Purple guitarist Steve Morse is mourning um, the death of his wife. Um, Janine Morris passed away on Sunday, February 4th, after battling stage four cancer for at least a couple of years. Okay, the last two years. And again, the timing of this, if you go back three years, um, what was happening three years ago? right around this time what was happening all right i'm putting i'm look i'm putting it out there i'm putting it out there and again my concern is that humanity doesn't care and we're just going to chalk it up to the the normal just this is what happens this is what happens i don't know how old she was it doesn't say how old she was here but um Anyway, uh, Steve Morse is a really good guy. I just want to say that. Um, her illness led to Steve's departure from Deep Purple in 2022 after he took a hiatus to concentrate on taking care of her. He was replaced by Simon McBride. And he was replaced rather quickly, by the way, in Deep Purple. It's business. I, I get it. Um, Deep Purple, though, they were talking about how Maybe they were going to wind things down and uh, he wanted to take care of his wife and good for him. What a good guy, huh? Steve took to his social media to share a photo. Now, if I get a little misty eyed here and, and I have a little trouble getting through this, this is just this is a rough one. Steve took to his social media to share a photo of his wife and he included the following message. Yesterday, February 4th, at 2.40 p.m., I said my last goodbye to my beloved wife, Janine. We had been in a period of remission, which lasted not nearly long enough. But luckily, I was able to spend virtually every day with her as she found workarounds to get through some of the aftermath of the long chemo treatment. But we did travel and do things, and... We're enjoying life with both of us uh, cherishing every moment. Deep down, we knew that any day we could get the news. Anybody who knows um, about stage four cancer treatments knows that each scan, each blood test is done with fingers crossed. We never knew, but this return of the cancer. Now listen to this, people. Um, this return of the cancer shocked, shocked all of our doctors almost as much as us. Just two weeks before she died, we were riding around in a small plane sightseeing several times. A few days later, while she was sleeping, I saw her in some distress. I took a reading of her blood oxygen saturation and immediately scooped her up to the hospital. Eight days later, she crashed on full life support. Now, this next part is, is rough. Her lungs filled with tiny cancer cells that somehow made it impossible to get enough oxygen. They spread so aggressively and instantly that there was no time for chemo to even work. I'm wondering, is Steve Morris trying to send everybody a message here? with this last line, they spread so aggressively and instantly 
that there was no time for the chemo to work. Just, again, let that hang in the air a bit. Some of you who knew her, um, as she would um, sell shirts at my trio, the Steve Morris Band, and she loved to travel and meet everyone, if anybody happens to read this who got their picture with Janine and I a few weeks ago at the Kansas concert in Clearwater, by the way, a couple of my patrons had sent me messages about that concert. Um, I, I didn't attend it. It's, it is within driving distance for me, but it, it's, it's still pretty crazy to get up to Clearwater. Anyway, um, he says, if you have a photo of the last show she ever went to, I'd love to see it, and I will post it. He goes on to say, thanks to all of the people who supported her, encouraged her, and were just nice people to her. She always felt comfortable talking with people who really loved music and felt enthusiastic about us being able to tour together when she could arrange it. She was a great mom, a great wife, and a great soulmate. I just can't believe that this last week or what this last week has done to our lives. Cherish those around you and let them know. I have absolutely no regrets from quitting touring to be with her, but she really wanted me to get back playing. It takes some time to set up gigs and such, so all these short tours we lined up were to allow her to accompany me. I'll be playing those gigs and more, but without the wonderful woman I just lost. Man. Um, all right. So uh, what else, what else is there? What else is there? And, and look, folks, again, I've said in multiple videos for those of you who don't like me because I've decided to go down this road, all right? Got two of them today Two. Well, first you said it was, you know, a circulatory issue. Now you're saying it's a cancer issue. Um, do some reading, do some research. There are people out there that are saying that cancer has become very aggressive in the last couple of years in many cases. And there might be a, there might be a reason for that. There might be. So what are we supposed to do? Just ignore it, right? Just keep driving the car. Don't look to either side. Just keep going down the road. Nothing to see. Just stay in your lane, dude. I, you know what? This is this is baffling to me because, yeah, I started this channel just talking about music, kind of a very nonchalant way. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that wish, hey, just go back to doing that. But as you get older, you, you start to your priorities start to change. This guy's talking about his his wife who he loved. I tell people you know, all the time, I love my kids. I love my wife. Those are the most important things. I mean, music is secondary. And he quit one of the greatest rock bands in the history of the world so he could be with his wife. So kudos to him. He had his priorities correct. I mean, I think he would have looked like a real jerk. Hey, honey, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to uh, Belfast. So, you know, I'll be home eventually. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess some people don't look at this as a connection. They don't see it, that it's just a conspiracy theory. Well, people are sending me stuff at like at a higher rate than say a week ago, where studies are out there about what this is doing or what this could be doing to things like heart disease and cancer. And there have been full interviews now that have stayed up on this platform, which that wasn't happening six months ago. That was not happening. Uh, and some of them aren't even getting fact checked or um, they have that little, this is what the Center for Disease and Chaos is saying about this particular issue. Learn more and go to cdc.gov or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I, I've said this over and over again. I don't want this to be true. But the more time that goes by, the more it looks like this is a distinct possibility. Now, 
what drives me crazy about my fellow human beings is either ignore it or you're a crazy person. So we're not going to address it. There's none of that. Wouldn't you rather be safe than sorry? Don't they recall like car seats if they're not manufactured to specifications? Because if the car rolls over and the baby rolls out of the seat or flies out of the car, isn't that a huge issue? And it may not happen, but it might happen one time or it might happen like less than, I don't know, 10 times or whatever. But for that precaution, we're going to recall all of the car seats. Yeah, got a recall. Somebody um, got sick on some chicken that they bought at a supermarket. What do they do? They recall all of that chicken brand or whatever. Massive recall. Tyson recalls all of their chicken sent to all of these stores. But on this issue, we won't, we won't look at this. We won't look at it. Well, it's hard, it's hard to make the connection, and that's the problem. Exactly. If you're going to commit a crime, you cover your tracks, and you make it very difficult to follow. That's, that's what, and is, do you think this was just going to be out in the open, that people were going to be keeling over as they walked by your house? No. No, that would be, that would be too obvious. So, yeah, all of these different things. And by the way, who does this benefit? Who makes money off of chemo treatments? Who makes money off of cancer drugs? Who makes money off of all of the heart disease medications that are out there? Have you turned on the television at nine o'clock at night lately? I mean, it's kind of like my bedtime, but you know, some nights I'm, I'm really crazy and I stay up till 930. And I watch a show and they're like, hey, they just played this ad during the last commercial break. They're playing it again. And in some breaks, they play the same ad twice for a certain product that is supposed to fix a problem that you have. Uh, and, and there are other ways to fix that problem, like to, to mitigate the actual problem rather than just treating the symptom. But they don't tell you about that. Now, why is that? Why won't they tell you about that? Because they want to make money. Because they want to say, hey, we, hey, you've got this problem. Um, Plus, it'll help you lose weight on top of it. If you're fat, it'll, it's got another benefit. <sighs> I feel so bad for Steve Morse, but he, he did a good thing. He, he was a husband, and um, we need more of that, especially in the rock and roll world. Where, where do you ever hear about a husband being a great husband like that? I remember Linda McCartney, Paul McCartney. That was, that, Paul was pretty good on that one. I mean, I'm sure there are others. Um, but this is a great example. Hey, I'm just going to quit. You guys go on without me. I got to take care of my wife. Steve Morse is a hero. He's a hero. Um, and for his heroism and for everybody else who is wondering what the hell is going on out there, um, we need answers to these questions. We don't need to just keep asking questions. And if there's no link, prove it. If there's, here's the thing. It's kind of like in a courtroom. It doesn't rest on me to prove my case. It rests on them to prove they, they're safe and effective. This is what we've heard. Everything is safe and effective over and over again to where it's a freaking billboard in your brain and you're, you're walking down the street like a zombie. Safe and effective, safe and effective, safe. No, what if it's not? What if it's not? And you can't say it out loud. And there are a whole bunch of people, by the way, that have come forward and they come with the receipts, they come with the proof and it doesn't get any coverage. There's no coverage, like zero. And I'm talking about mainstream media. I'm not talking about rumble channels or some bit shoot thing on, you know, I mean, to get these videos from these platforms that, I mean, they can barely host the video. You send it to somebody who's a normie, they're gonna be like, yeah, what's this? Can I watch this on my phone? Will this, will this work? I mean, where does this link go? And it just, they look at it like it's from another planet. And so this needs to go mainstream. And if it doesn't go mainstream, then a whole bunch of people, the same people who thought this was awesome, all of those people are, are never going to figure this out because those are the people that watched 
the news coverage day after day after day. And I'll tell you what, they're still walking around out there because I see them when I go out. And I just look down at my feet and I go, what the heck did these people do? They're very convincing people. And they have all of the media and all of the celebrity culture. And you can go on. I understand why people think Taylor Swift is a psyop, even though I don't think she is. But I understand that because, again, people get their marching orders from the wrong people and they trust the wrong people. And then when you tell them, it's like being a parent, like, no, Johnny, you shouldn't jump off the bridge if everyone else is jumping off the bridge. You shouldn't do that. And you're like, you're like the Simon Cowell. You're like the bad guy. Like, oh, I thought we're supposed to do everything they tell us to do. I mean, I've been doing it. I mean, everybody does it, you know? So I've, uh, I've gone on long enough here. I, I think I would have probably stopped talking a while ago if this wasn't the second time today that something just, it doesn't look right. And guess what? If it is just the normal course of events that this happened 30 years ago to people and it happened the exact same way, again, the tripwire for me was, oh, my doctors didn't, see this coming. We didn't see it coming. We had remission. We had good news. Toby Keith, by the way, said he had turned a corner. Now, cancer is like this, though. I get it. All right. It's again, it's not up to me to it's not my job to to prove my case. It's their job to prove what they said initially. If, if they can prove that without a shadow of a doubt and say there's yeah, none of this is related to that, and here's how we can prove it. Okay, all right. I can go on to talk about how Lou Graham was the best singer ever or whatever thing that you want to talk about. But I think this is a big enough deal where people need to pay attention to it. And some people, they tune me out immediately. They just, <laughs> this, he's talking about this again. And I don't know if that's because there's guilt, because what's the harm in talking about this? What, what's the harm? And that's the other thing, too. You get pushback from people who, dude, uh, you know, I, I liked you. They always say, I liked you when you did X, Y, and Z. But now I don't like you at all because you just, you know, you're talking about this and this has nothing to do with the other thing that you talk about. Okay, it's my channel. I run a soft dictatorship here. What can I say? Anyway, folks, um, if you want to support the channel, <laughs> I know people hate it when I talk about this too. This is another one. Um, you can do so via Patreon. And the reason the algorithm doesn't like me is, is exactly what I just got through doing, okay? It's easy to talk about certain controversies in music because that's kind of like escapism. That's easy. But when you have to face reality, that's much harder to do. So Patreon, YouTube memberships, and yes... Continue to pray for peace in the Middle East and around the world. And please, let's all pray that this doesn't keep happening. And if there isn't a link, that's good news. If there is a link, then I think humanity is really, really screwed.